uh, vice president of the Deering Center Neighborhood Association. Uh, we are now streaming and recording, great. Um, welcome to the District 5 Charter Commission Virtual Candidates Forum. Um, really happy that we have um, both candidates here, Moni Hang and Ryan Lozanik. Um, uh, we are gonna do an hour long forum with uh, a set of questions each candidate will answer. Um, we are unfortunately not taking uh, questions from the crowd, but we did source the questions that we have from folks in the neighborhood that submitted uh, questions. Um, and before we get started, I'll just say a little bit about um, Deering Center Neighborhood Association. Um, uh, thank you both for joining. Deering Center Neighborhood Association is a, is a member-supported nonprofit. Um, we're working hard to represent the interests of this neighborhood uh, which is diverse and, and growing fast. Um, we put on a lot of events. Um, Porch Fest, I'm happy to announce, will happen this year, September 12th. That's one of our featured events, but we do a lot of others. Um, Candidate Forums is another event that we do. And um, we're happy to be hosting this District 5 uh, Forum on behalf of DCNA tonight. Um, if you live in the neighborhood or even if you don't, please um, support Deering Center Neighborhood Association at DeeringCenter.me or come to one of our virtual monthly meetings, which I hope can be in person soon. Um, uh, let's see, Zach, who you see on the screen right there, uh, Zach Enright is also a board member of DCNA. He will be the timekeeper. So you will get to see very attractive cards from him um, and, uh, to help make sure things are moving along. Again, folks who are joining us um, outside of, of Moni, Ryan, me, and Zach, you are not able to mute yourself, unmute yourself, sorry, um, but thank you for joining uh, the live uh, candidates forum. Uh, so with that, I think I'll get started. Um, so first question is for Ryan, a uh, two minute question. Why are you running for a seat on the Charter Commission? Yeah, thank you, Colin. Um, so my name is Ryan Lozanek. Uh, that's how you pronounce it. Um, I grew up in North Deering. Um, I've lived here my entire life um, with the exception of undergrad. Uh, I went to LISEF, I went to Lyman World Middle School. I went to Portland High School. Uh, my mother still works for the school system as a, as a secretary uh, as well. Um, I'm currently a law student at the University of Maine School of Law as well. Um, and it's actually really great to see so many people come out who are interested in this process. And thank you so much for coming and for uh, listening to our ideas and our thoughts for Portland's future. So um, I'm running for Charter Commission because as somebody who has lived here for a very long time, um, I don't believe the status quo is working as well as it could be for the people of, of District 5. Um, and uh, I want to give our neighborhoods more of a voice. Um, and that doesn't mean, you know, that we need to rip up the document and, and start fresh either. But there are some common sense reforms we can make that will make Portland work better for, for all of us who live here, especially those of us off Peninsula. Um, I want this process to be very public facing. I want it to be very transparent, involved. I want it to be very community oriented. Um, a guiding principle for me throughout this process um, is how we can give taxpayers, how we can give neighborhoods more of a voice in, in Portland politics. Um, I think our neighborhoods are, are oftentimes forgotten about um, by City Hall and, and ignored. Um, and I'm running for charter to, to give us more of, of that voice. So we have an opportunity to, to do structural changes and the people of District 5 voted to open up our charter. Clearly they want us to take another look at it. And I'm hoping to be that voice for our district I love policy, I love law, I love just getting in the weeds of it and really taking a close look at what works and what doesn't. I'm not running for any in agenda, any interest group, anything like that, um, because we can't risk screwing this one up. So it's a very serious process and I'm excited to be here and, and thank you for having me. Great, thanks so much, Ryan. We'll follow up on some of those details. Moni, uh, why are you running for a seat on the Charter Commission? Well, first, I just want to say hi to Ryan. It's, it's interesting. He and I live in a very close neighborhood and we've never actually met in person. So it's kind of nice to finally meet the, uh, the gentleman that's running against me. So very nice to meet you, Ryan, finally. 
Um, well, that's a great question. I'm running, well, like, you know, I, I, I grew up in, in North Deering. Well, I didn't grow up in North Deering. I'm actually an, an immigrant here. Um, but I went to King Middle School. I mean, I went to Reiki School. I went to King Middle School and I graduated from Portland High School. Um, I find, you know, I, I consider myself very involved in the community. I live in North Deering now. Uh, my wife grew up on this street. Uh, we have two kids together. Both of my kids, uh, one of them go to Lyman Moore and the other one is a freshman at Portland High School. Um, I'm very involved in the community. Uh, I own my own business. Uh, I run a nonprofit, uh, you know, girls play football league uh, for third graders all the way up to high school kids. And, you know, I, I, I took a seat back um, when the, the charter process took place and then realizing that there's nobody else running and I, I just felt, you know, nothing for nothing against Ryan. I just felt the need to be another voice for uh, District 5. And I feel like I'm very invested in our community. And I just want to be more involved in, in what's going on. And I feel like this, this, um, this election is very important. So I'm excited to, to be part of this and excited to be the voice of uh, District 5 in North Jersey. Thanks so much, buddy. Um, yeah. So uh, this one's going to go right back to you. Um, what are the greatest challenges facing our city right now? What are the challenges? Um, well, I know that, so when I was going out and, and, and putting down my signs, I had an opportunity to speak to the neighbors that allowed me to install my sign in, in their yard. And some of the things that they were saying, uh, especially over at the Riverton area, they're, they're concerned about the, um, the, the homeless shelter that's going on over there, the, the major uh, homeless shelter. And, and you know, that's a pretty uh, quiet neighborhood. And so a lot of the residents over there are very concerned about that. Um, and a lot of different opinions about that. The other thing that I'm concerned about is uh, ranked choice voting. And, and I think the third thing that I'm concerned about also is candidates that um, that are qualified to run for a seat. Um, the requirement is that they're only a resident of, of the city for three months. And, and I find that that's not very, uh, I don't find that that's uh, fully invested in our community. Uh, three months is, is very short. Um, and I think that's something that I really wanna address and, and talk a little bit more on. Great, thanks so much. Yeah. Ryan, same question to you. What do you see the greatest challenges facing the city? Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a loaded, a very loaded question. Um, I think Portland is at a crossroads in a lot of ways, um, politically, socially, culturally, economically, uh, et cetera. Um, and I, I think it's important to recognize that the, the Charter Commission can't fix a lot of those issues, right? Um, but it can decide who has the power to, to address those issues. Um, some of the things that I see um, in the community, I mean, affordability of housing and, and living costs is, is astronomically high. Um, Homelessness is, is a big thing. I mean, like, uh, you know, the Riverton Shelter is again, is a good example of, of that and how the city's navigating it, I think poorly. Um, I think equitable, well-funded school system, you know, so our kids have the best start we can possibly give them. Um, as a graduate of Portland schools, I, I know the best investment that we can make is, is in our young people and in kids. Um, and politically, I mean, politically we're a mess. Um, you know, interest groups, uh, and I think this has really shown, this process has really shown this. I mean, interest groups are, slinging mud at each other left and right um, from all sides. And, and as a candidate, I've refused to kind of feed into that, but it's a challenge that's, that's facing our community. And um, that, I think that's something that, that needs to be reckoned with a little bit. Um, so those, those are the big things. I mean, rent and affordability uh, would probably be the biggest ones. Um, and again, out here, just lack of, lack of, lack of voice and, and lack of um, ability to participate. I mean, I don't know when the last time, um, a city official has come out to ask us how we how we feel about a lot of things going on in city hall. So, um, but I'll get to that. I won't go on a rant. Um, but yeah, that's what I see as the bigger as some of the bigger challenges for us. Great. We're pretty fortunate in District Five to have two candidates that came through the city school system. So that's that's great. As yeah, somebody who's got two kids in the city school system right now. Um, 
So, um, Moni, this one will lead with you again. Um, sure. So a, a lot of, um, or, or a lot of people in, in, in uh, running for the Charter Commission and, and otherwise have been talking about a lack of transparency in city government. Um, and I'd love to see, you know, if you agree that there is, is a lack of transparency, tell me, you know, what transparency means to you and what you might do to help through the charter make the city more transparent. I mean, from my own personal experience, I feel, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a community person and I, I'm, I'm more of a hands-on, I'm a, I'm a face-to-face -face type of uh, person. Uh, this is new to me, this whole Zoom process that we're doing. Uh, I would love to be more in a, in a meeting setting and, and, and be able to see and talk. So to, to me, I, 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 don't, I mean, it, it, that's a really good question. Um, I think just being more, more vocal and more open to letting the community know what's going on. Um, I don't have a problem. I mean, when you sent me these questions here, I actually went out and started chatting with some of the people in the neighborhood uh, in North Deering where I live and also over at Riverton, uh, Riverton side. Uh, and, you know, and, and they were able to express some of the concern, but that's what I would like to continue to keep doing is, is to be able to, um, you know, stay active and, and inform the community what's going on. And, and that's, that's how I want to look at it from my perspective. Great. And you've got a couple more seconds. Is there something that you, you think that city government can do to be more transparent um, beyond what you could do? Yeah, I mean, just letting the public know what's going on. I think, uh, I think everything should be open. You know, I mean, this is, this is, again, we are here to represent our city and I'm here to also represent District 5. And that's my goal. My goal is to have an open dialogue uh, with everybody. I, I, there's, there, there shouldn't be anything that we need to hide. Great, thanks, Moni. So yeah. Ryan, I can repeat the question, or if you remember it, uh, um, you can talk it through. But basically, we're just talking about city transparency and city government, and what what it means to you, and what you might do about it. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, in in my opinion, uh, transparency means we have a city government that is open and that is honest, and is very clear about what they are what they are doing. Um, and there's a couple prongs to this that I've, I've been thinking about a little bit. Um, I think Portland City Hall should release a, a detailed, easily digestible budget form on what taxes are being spent on to the public annually. Um, the public should be easily able to see what their tax dollars are paying for, um, graphs, those sorts of things. Um, right now, we are facing down a, a property revaluation, and, and I've knocked on almost a thousand doors in District 5, and that is probably the most important thing that I hear about. And people are scared, they're worried about that. Um, not everyone, but a lot of people are, right? Um, so I think seeing where your money is going, and the charter won't control the tax rate too, I, I should say as well, but you know, seeing where your money is going is something the charter can do. Um, I'd also like to take a look at executive sessions on the, on the, city, hall, on the city hall level. I think that um, the council's had a lot of private executive sessions with corporation council. I, which I'm not against not having, uh, you know, executive sessions at any time, but I think they really need to be reserved for emergency legal situations um, and, and not used um, not used too often. I really think uh, it, it keeps the public from knowing what's going on with our elected officials um, and those sorts of things. And um, I'm trying to approach it from a, an analytical and, and a legal background and, and how we can best, best approach that. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, I think the charter can address it, um, and I think that we should address it. Um, I think we need a more transparent government on what exactly, you know, we're paying for um, in, in taxes and those sorts of things. So, thanks. Right. I'm going to take my one of my follow-up questions to you then, um, because you you mentioned, and I can't quote you on this one, but it you know kind of feeling um, like people didn't come out, and I assume that's off Peninsula or away from City Hall, and and talk to to. To voters much and citizens and then in the press herald article you also talked about district five feeling unheard and overlooked um uh, you know mainly because of peninsula issues so can you give a you know, get you get an extra two minutes but kind of what you mean by uh of that you know maybe some examples on to illustrate an example or two to illustrate it and what you might do with the charter to 
to kind of change that, you know, beyond the tax dollar transparency and executive sessions that you mentioned already. Yeah, sure, sure. Do you have two minutes for this or? Two minutes, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, great, uh, yeah, that's a loaded question, let's do it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I've grown up out here and um, as Portland continuously, you know, we're, again, we're in this crossroads that I talked about um, economically and culturally and socially. And I, I think that um, I know that a lot of times city officials, quite frankly, um, don't pay attention to our district. Um, I'm not the only one who's referred to it as Portland's forgotten district. Um, a good example of this, I mean, and it's not just like policy things. I mean, you can look at things as, as simple as sewer repairs, right? We were having some some sewer issues on our my street. I have a little dead end road over in, in North Deering. And, um, the city hadn't replaced the public sewer line since the 1950s. Um, that was concerning, right? And, and I have neighbors who call city government a lot. Someone might answer the phone, maybe not. Um, if you're lucky, and will something get repaired or fixed? Maybe not, right? Um, and those are the smaller things, and those are the things really people care about, right? I mean, it's not these big policy ideas, which I do care about as well, but it's these smaller changes we can make. So you're probably like, great, Ryan, so how exactly um, can we fix that, right? Um, a big part of, yeah, yeah. Um, a big part of that is, um, is going to be community boards, right? So, um, and it's an idea I'm experimenting with, and I was gonna talk about it a little bit more. I'm gonna shift my camera so I'm not looking at the ground too. Um, <laughs> uh, so essentially you would formalize community organizations like Deering Center, um, Neighborhood Association, and allow for regular people in the neighborhood to make formal recommendations to City Hall um, for things that they want to see, um, whether that's a stop sign on, on the corner or whether that's something in the schools, right? Um, it could be a bunch of things. Um, I think we should try to that in, formalize it a bit. Um, Portland had community boards that were, did that in the past. And I think that that's something that we should certainly revisit. Um, and I don't have too many more specifics about it right now because I don't want to say this is how we're going to do it. And it's not, um, but uh, that's my rough idea. So uh, I hope that's a little helpful. Yeah, thanks Ryan. And you'll have, you, know, you can follow up on that idea or anything else in the closing statements. Um, so you're, you're up, probably feels like you've been talking about a lot, but you're up next in my sequence here for the next question, and then Moni will go. Um, so Portland's gone from a mayor that was, you know, essentially ceremonial to a relatively weak mayor, and some people advocate for an even stronger role for the mayor of, of Portland. Do you agree that the mayor should have a stronger role, and, and why or why not? That's, that, you first. That's you first, right? Oh, it's me first. Um, yeah. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I feel like I've been talking for a while. Um, yeah, that's the that's the million dollar question, right? Um, that's probably up there with taxes on what I hear from people the most about um, in, in the public when I'm doing doors. Um, so I support a strong mayor. I'll be blunt about it. I'm not going to I'm not going to hide it. But I don't think that the mayor should run everything in the city of Portland. Um, I don't think they should run paving, stop signs, things like that. I, I don't think that. Um, but I think this is an opportunity for us to finish what the last commission started in 2009. So um, I think the mayor should, should draft our city budget. Um, and that doesn't mean to get to decide all of our money and what it's spent on. It means that it would be subject to oversight from our council and things like that. Um, but the budget is where a lot of the power comes from in Portland. And right now, um, uh, our unelected city manager drafts that budget. Um, you know, it, it's hard, right? Because I fear one person with too much power. And I always fear that. Um, so I'm not in favor of the of the of the executive mayor type thing. I'm not that. I, I think having a city administrator that runs the day to day operations of things, make sure things are functioning, makes sense. Um, but the buck needs to stop with our our elected officials. Um, you know, I think the the manager or administrator needs to keep their hands off the policy wheel. Um, and uh, yeah. So I, I think that that is what our mayor should be. I think we need to strengthen it a little bit more well define it a little bit. We spend a lot of taxpayer money on the mayor every year. I think that if we're going to have a mayor, they should be able to do something. Um, so those are my thoughts. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, and Moni, uh, can yeah. you talk a little bit about how you see the role of the mayor? Is that something that you want to strengthen and, and why? Well, you know, I've been thinking about that a little bit and I mean, I don't have a strong opinion about it. Um, again, you know, um, this is this is very new for me, uh, running for something like this. Um, but you know, 
residents of, of North Daring, you know, some of the people I've chatted with, you know, chatted, you know, asked this question to, um, you know, they, they, they all feel that the mayor is, is, is the position that she's holding right now is fine. Uh, they don't feel comfortable with her taking on any more uh, power, uh, any more control over the city manager. Um, again, you know, the, the, the two different, you know, uh, responsibilities and, you know, uh, the mayor is something that, you know, the city votes for. And, you know, in regards to the city manager, it's something that we hire uh, someone that's qualified to, to run the day-to-day -day budget. And so I'm not sure, I'm open to, to talking more about it, but I, I don't feel that the, uh, the mayor should have more power over the city manager. Um, that, that's, that's how I feel about it right now. Great, thanks, Moni. So we're gonna stay with you for a kind of follow-up question, related question, sure. which is, um, you know, how you're feeling about the role of the Portland city manager and, and whether it should be changed. So what I heard from you was that you don't, um, or what you're hearing from um, uh, folks in your district, and it sounds like where you're leaning is not more mayoral power. So how, do you see any changes for the city manager in terms of their role? I mean, again, you know, everybody feels really, um, the people that I have, you know, um, had a conversation with, they, they feel like, you know, our, our city manager is doing a really good job. I mean, that is what he is hired to do. That's his qualification. And so uh, to give the mayor more power to oversee what he's doing it, it, right now, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm not opposed to, to having a, a, a more detailed conversation and discussion about that and, and figure out what is, um, a stronger role for our mayor, but right now I feel like John is doing a great job. I think he's a qualified uh, person for the for the position. Thanks, and Ryan, um, same question. And you know, you've made some reference to changes to the mayoral role. So, um, and I think said keep the hands off the policy wheel. So, can you expand on that in, in terms of the city manager ideas? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to view this through a lens that really reflects District 5, right? Because I, I don't want, whether it's a strong mayor, a strong city manager, to be ignoring our district and to choke off our district's voice, right? Um, so I think we need to look at the pros and cons of a city manager and not be reactionary, right? And I, I think that, um, you know, the issue I have with the current city manager a little bit is that they can prevent counselor access to department heads um, and policy staff. Um, there's also no incentive for the city manager to care about um, our district, right? And that's not that the city manager is a bad person. I mean, I'm not insinuating that. It's also important to note that John, John Jennings is retiring in a little over a year. Um, the reappointment process for that powerhouse of a position is going to be incredibly politicized. Um, and I think we need to make sure that people have, have a voice in that, particularly the people of District 5. Um, you know, I think the role of the manager needs to be running the day-to-day -day operations, making sure things function right, hands off the policy wheel, um, like I said, um, but policy should be in our elected officials. I mean, that, that helps our district. When our counselor, no matter who it is, no matter if they're Republican or Democrat, can actually go up to City Hall and make changes for our district, whether it's getting rid of all those annoying three-way stop sign areas down, you know, down the Riverside area or, or whatever it is, right? Um, whether it's just, you know, fixing up our fire station, whatever, when our uh, city of councilors that we elect are able to do that for us, that is what it's supposed to be for, right? Um, that is how I'm looking at this. And I'm not saying the city manager position is evil, right? I'm just saying, I think we need to tweak this. I think we need a little bit stronger of a mayor. And I think we need to tone back the manager a little bit. And that will allow our district to have a little bit more voice in, in, our, in our municipal politics. Oh, great. Thank you both. And you guys are doing a great job kind of distinguishing your positions a bit. Um, so next question, Ryan, you're first. Um, so Fair Election, Fair Elections Portland, which is um, their campaign to establish clean elections is why we're really convening this charter commission in, in a lot of ways. They estimate that a viable public campaign, a public finance campaign will cost about $200,000. To do and and so do you support fully funding a program with taxpayer dollars um, for clean elections? 
Yes, I do. Um, and I will tell you why. Um, and I was a little hesitant on it. Um, in the grand scheme of the budget, it's a very low cost reform. Um, and I want to note that that clean elections doesn't mean that you go down to city hall and you're like, I want to run for city council, cut me a $10,000 check. It's not how it works at all. This program would only make our district stronger and give us stronger counselors and stronger school board members. What it requires is, is that a candidate go door to door in their district and get a certain amount, it's like 60 or something, $5 donations from people in their community who are agreeing to financially support them through a $5 donation. Um, and what it does is it forces those candidates who want to use city money um, to go door to door and go down those back roads in D5 that aren't always traffic, so that people just drive through and talk to people. Um, you know, I, it's, it's a pretty common sense thing on my end. Um, it also allows people without financial resources to get in there and run for office. Um, you know, running for office is expensive, even for a race like this. Um, so it really encourages public participation. And when you get a certain amount of $5 donations from people in your community, when there's enough people in your community who are willing to give you $5 to support your campaign, then that unlocks a little bit of money from City Hall to help support your campaign. Um, a little bit of taxpayer money. Um, and the result we've seen on the state level has been phenomenal. I mean, we have um, state legislators who went to election time every two years. They go door to door and they collect their $5 and they talk to constituents, they see what's on people's minds and they go serve in Augusta, creates a more service oriented government. Um, and I think that would be great for District 5 if we had that for school board and, and council candidates. Um, so yeah, I support it. Thanks Ryan. Simone, well, same question. So public campaign finance, um, you know, you, you, um, you support the taxpayers of the city of Portland putting that bill um, and, you know, and generally, do you support the, the idea? Um, I don't. And, and, and this is not just coming from me. This is coming from, from the neighborhood uh, of the people that I've talked to. I, 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 I don't support it. Um, I, I don't support that our tax money should go towards candidates uh, to run their campaign. I think that uh, it's important for, you know, myself and, you know, for Ryan that wants to take on this responsibility to go out and, and, and market ourselves and, and let people know why we're running and, and ask for money. I don't think that it should be a city's responsibility to finance my campaign. Um, I mean, if you want to run for a, a position in our city, put the work into it. You know, um, I, I think that's, that's, that's only fair because what if an 18 year old kid decides that he wants to run for a school board position? You know, I mean, now I have to split $5,000 with this kid. And I mean, I'm not saying that he's not qualified, but it just, it just doesn't, it, it's, I'm open to uh, a, a more detailed conversation about it, but at this point, the way I read it and the way I understand it, I don't support it. I think that if you are going to run for a city position, whether it's school board, whether it's you know for the charter or for city council, you should put the work into it. I mean, I have to go out and get 75 signatures and in doing so, let people know why and, 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 and ask for the donations later. If they're willing to sign your paper, then, they should be able, you know, you should be able to have the courage to ask them for the, the donation to, to run your campaign. And everybody's campaign is different. I mean, you know, we have other candidates that raise over $10,000 and you have candidates who raise $200. So, I mean, that's a tough, tough thing for our taxpayers, especially myself who owns, you know, real estate and, and, and own a home. I mean, and this is something that's going to go every year. So it's not like it's a one-time uh, finance. It, it's something that our taxpayers are going to be paying every year because there's always a school board coming up or there's a, a city council coming up. So it, it's a really tough one for our city to, to swallow in regards yeah, to- Yeah, so let me follow up, Moni, just like Ryan had an extra two minutes just on sure. this election topic. So, because yeah. the way I read the Portland Press Herald article, it said you support the concept of clean elections, but not, not uh, taxpayer um, support for that. Do you have another way of financing it or, or basically not, not something that, that you feel like? You know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. So as, as I evolve into this 
campaign running thing. And as I get myself more engulfed in this, this, this process, um, I understand and I learn more. Um, I, you know, one of the things that a, a, a neighborhood friend of mine said to me was, you know, maybe our city gives them some type of platform, you know, whether it's a, a website, whether it's something that, you know, our tax money, a small portion can go towards where everybody has the same platform, you know, of, of information, you know, going to the city and, and pulling up Moni Hang and you see my, my website, my information. But as far as to, to finance my election, where let's say it costs, you know, $8,000 to do, I, I'm, that's, that's a tough, that's a tough pill, uh, pill for me to swallow. Thanks, Moni. Can I ask um, a quick follow-up and, and maybe we won't have enough time, but can you just clarify also your position on ranked choice voting? You mentioned that early on and I, I just, I don't think you had time to talk about what you meant by that. Well, we were talking, I mean, part of the, the city council, you know, I mean, part of our, our responsibility is to, to look at that ranked choice voting. And I, 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 I just, I, I don't understand why it's necessary. Um, I, I, I know it's new. I, I know uh, Portland is, is one of the cities that's, that's implementing this, but nowhere else is doing this. I just, to me, it just doesn't make any sense. It, it just, um, if you're going to vote for one candidate, you just vote for that person. I don't know why there should be A, B, and C. And then if A gets all the votes, but B and C gets more votes on the bottom. I mean, it, it's just, to me, it's just too complicated. Um, I think it's fair that if somebody's going to vote for Ryan, they're going to vote for Ryan. You know, if somebody's going to vote for me, they should just vote for me. It shouldn't be me, Ryan, and somebody else. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't have a good experience with ranked choice voting based on my, my experience um, of, of understanding it. It, it. I don't like it, personally. Great. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> yeah. um, so, Ryan, you go first on the next one. So, you know, Portland hasn't had a charter commission for a decade. Um, and there's a whole group of folks that are vocally, um, you know, asking for broad changes to the charter, tackling things like systemic racism and oversight of police, participatory budgeting, the neighborhood level. And, you know, I think there's a, a, certainly a, a sizable group also thinks that, yeah, there's some changes, but maybe it's more in the tweak side of things. And you've talked about this a little bit. I, I, it's a chance for each of you guys to kind of talk about you know where where you see yourself is it a is it a it more in the tweak and or more in a, a radical or significant change and and you know if so what what are the components uh, Ryan first yeah yeah I mean the charter like you're saying is a great opportunity it's an outstanding opportunity to dive into you know what's working and what's not and that's how I'm viewing it right um, so I mean. I don't think the people of District 5 voted to open up our charter um, just to make maybe a small tweak here and there. I, and I'm not saying a radical takeover either. I, I don't believe that. Um, you know, I think they want to find out why they're not being included in conversations in City Hall. I mean, it's come up multiple times. It's going to come up again. Um, you know, look at the Riverton shelter, for example, right? Um, North Earring, Riverton residents have pushed back against this plan and are pushing for smaller shelters around Portland. Homeless advocates are also pushing for the smaller shelter plan. And yet, we have to resort to a citizen referendum to have people in City Hall listen to us, right? And we shouldn't have to govern by referendum. Um, we should govern by including the community in the conversation. Um, so long story short, you know, I don't believe we should rip up the entire document. Um, but I also don't think we should get into office and do nothing. I don't think that's the idea, right? Um, people are counting on us. And, and this is our chance. Um, to put the work in, put the research in, put the outreach in, um, to make this system work better for us. Um, so I, I think I fall somewhere in the middle. I, I don't think I'm particularly on one end or the other. Um, I'm looking for common sense things um, that, that will help guide our, our community and, and, and neighborhoods into a stronger, a stronger future. So um, I hope that's helpful. Yeah, thank you. It, you can doesn't you don't have to be extreme despite what's going on in, in the political universe around the country. Um, Moni, same question. Yeah. So yeah, do you see it needing more of a tweak, more of a radical change or or something in between? So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be um, completely honest 
with you and 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 the uh, and and everybody that's listening to this. You know, um, this is this is completely out of uh, my comfort zone in in regards to you know this whole running for the charter. Um, and and this I've been thinking about this question a lot, and I feel like it it's something that I am completely open to having you know a, a group dialogue with uh, the other charter members and 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 because I'm I'm going in I don't I do understand that we have issues and and 100% I understand that you know I'm, I'm you know I'm an immigrant I experienced um, issues growing up. And I do believe that it's important to have, you know, an independent citizen to oversee what's going on with the police, but making sure that it's, it's someone that's qualified uh, to do it. But I, I'm ha I, I don't have the, the perfect answer in this format here, because I feel like there's so much more that I need to learn. And um, so I, I'm going into this without any, um, I guess, uh, I, I want to go into this with with an open mind, I, I guess. Great. Thanks, Ronnie. Um, yeah. So, Ryan, you'll do this one first as well. This is a start, trying to get into the details, um, but something totally within the, the charter power of the Charter Commission. Um, so currently, and then we've seen this in the news recently, after the school board votes to approve their budget, then must be approved by the city council and then approved by the voters in citywide election. So what do you guys think of that process, starting with Ryan, um, for school budget? You'd like to see any changes and, and what would they be? Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy you asked um, because I, I wish there was more conversation about the school board and, and the budget in this process because it's a massive part of our, of our city budget among other things. Um, you know, it's incredibly important and I, I think it hasn't been talked about much. So this is great. Um, I support reforming the process. I mean, I, every year it comes up in the, in the local news, um, Portland, you know, tosses, the, tosses the, um, the budget back and forth between the council and the, and the school board and, and things like that. Um, so I, I think that the more I think about it, I think the mayor should have more, um, this should be a part of the mayor's budgeting authority, right? So I think that having the mayor draft the school budget as part of that in conjunction with the school board. Um, and I'm still a little, I'm still a little wishy on it, right? I, or we could just, you know, skip the budget process and send it straight, straight to the voters and, and skip the council. Um, so it's, it's a tough one. Um, I'm still in the murky waters on it. Um, but I'm going to do what's best for our school system at the end of the day and what's best for the kids. Um, you know, District 5 is, is fortunate enough to have two high schools, uh, two of Portland's three um, public schools and, and a lot of smaller schools and stuff like that. So it's, it's definitely something that's on my radar um, and, uh, and, and that sort of thing. So, and also being constant of the tax burden as well um, should be something we think about. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, sorry, it's not a very good answer. I, I apologize, but, uh, but that's, that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, well, it sounds like both of you guys have, uh, don't have preconceived notions about everything. So, Moni, same question to you. You know, how do you see the school budget process and, and any changes you, you would make? I like the process that we have in place. I, I like that the, the school board goes through what they have to go through. And then, again, you know, we're dealing with checks and balances. So, from there, you go to city council, and then you go to city manager, and it goes back to the school board. I like that process. And then at the end of the day, the city, the, the, the residents get to vote on it. Um, and again, you know, that's why we, we hired John Jennings. You know, I mean, that's his job to overlook everything and let everybody know, here's our money. This is what we have. Let's figure this out. Um, and then giving the, the, the resident the, of, of, the city, of, of Portland an opportunity to, to make the final decision. I like the process that we have in, in, in place. Um, you know, as a, as a property owner myself, I. I mean, you know, this, this school budget, it, 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 it's, um, it's a tough one. So to be able to go from the school board members right to the city, I mean, right to the residents is, um, I think it's a little tricky. And I like the process that we currently have now. Uh, I don't see that we need to change it. Thanks, Moni. Um, so this one is Moni first and then Ryan. Um, so this is, uh, I'm gonna pull a Cheryl Lehman. I saw her do this at, on the uh, uh, forum the other night and like she raised up this mailing. So I think many of you got this 
people first charter mailing, one of the things that's notable about this mailing is it neither mentions you guys, Moni or Ryan. Um, and and so, know. you know, that, that we'll see, that could be a, a good thing or a bad thing, but you know, I think, um, uh, I don't, I know nothing about the, what's behind the people first charter. I, I do know that that mailing went around. And one of the things that it does bring up um, in the list of reasons to oppose some of the candidates is um, uh, using the charter to hold police accountable. Um, so one, you know, at least one of the candidates got dinged for not wanting to use the charter um, to hold police accountable. So Moni, you know, we we touched on this, and um, uh, but I'd love you to dive in, and then Ryan a little bit more. Is that something that the charter should be used for? Is holding the police accountable? Um, that's a really that that's a really good that, that's a great question. Um, I think that we we should have a little bit uh, of a, a stake in the in the game with with our police department. I don't I don't for I think our police department here in Portland is doing a, a fantastic job. Um, I I don't have any issues with them. I. I I've had uh, detailed conversations with some of the police officers. I have uh, police officer friends um, in my neighborhood here that I'm, I'm very close to. I think it's I think it's open for discussion. I think that it's definitely something that's very important uh, for our city to 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 get a better understanding and what what involvement do we want to get into? I mean, what qualifications do we have? to get involved in something like that. Um, and so I'm not against it. So I'm definitely interested in having a, a more detailed dialogue with not just with the, uh, the, the candidates that are running for, for uh, the charter, but also with the police department. Thanks, Mike. And Ryan, same question. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you bring up the, uh, the, the mailer. I, um... I was disappointed um, to see it. Um, not that I wasn't an endorsed candidate. I was. I was disappointed in the personal attacks on it. I, I really. Um, it, it put a bad taste in my mouth. Um, and I think that uh, you know, uh, I know I'm not on it probably because I, I don't prescribe to any sort of an agenda. Um, I'm going to do what's right for the people in this district. So, anyway, uh, to the police. Uh, it's been asked a few times. I think having a, an independent police oversight board um, that's separate from from the mayor and, and from the um, from the council is is a good idea. Um, you know, I I haven't gotten into the nuances of it, um, but I, I'm open to the idea. Um, there's a, there's a lot of things you could do on the charter with police if you wanted to, um, and it's something that the charter will probably address. Um, but I think having an independent police oversight board, particularly with the events happening over the last year, might not be a bad idea. I think it's probably a good idea. Um, uh, just to make sure there's transparency and accountability with our, with our public servants and things like that. So um, that's, yeah, that's how I feel about that. Great. Um, so getting towards more of the wrap up now, uh, it's a chance to really just talk about one to three areas where you really think that the charter could use some, you know, real focus, attention, and discussion, and maybe revision. So, you know, getting out, um, either diving in deep in something you had to, you know, brought up briefly, or bringing up something new that you really think needs some attention. So, starting with you, Ryan, you know, one to three areas where you really want to dive deep when you're elected, if you're elected. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, try not to repeat myself. Um, I, I think one of the biggest things, and I wish it was being talked about more, was would be individual neighborhood empowerment. Again, I, it's it's something that I, I feel like I'm the only one saying it. I might not be, so don't quote me on that. But um, I, I think that is a huge thing. Neighborhood empowerment, increasing participation, um, and increasing people's involvement with our municipal government, and making sure that people don't need to fight with their with their city government on everything. Um, some things there will be fights about. I mean, there's no doubt about it, but how can we make this process work better? Um, so community boards, again, is one of the big things that I think the charter needs to address. Um, I think council district size, I don't think I've brought that up um, yet. It's something that I've also looked at. Um, so right now we have five uh, districts and, and three at large, and those at large folks represent the entire city of Portland. 
Um, I'm not a fan of, of packing the council with like 30 people, but I think it's a good idea. We can shift those at-large councilors to smaller districts. So you could have eight small districts that are more representative of their individual neighborhoods than um, three at large. Um, I don't know if that's really super necessary. If we have a mayor and we have a stronger mayor representing the city, um, having a council that is representative of our neighborhoods to hold that mayor accountable is probably a good idea. Um, and it's been done before. Uh, it wouldn't be that radical of a change. Um, and you know the needs of Deering Center aren't the same as the needs of the folks way over on Summit Street or you know at the end of at the end of uh, Riverton at the end of Riverside Street. They're different. Um, and you know, like Deering Center is cut into like thirds, and North Deering's cut in half with our district lines, and gives us more of a sense of community, gives our neighborhood more voice. Um, I, I think it's a great idea um, to to empower our our neighborhoods. Thanks, Ryan, for covering those two ideas. Uh, Moni, do you have some ideas you want to dive deeper in or bring up new ones? You got you. Can you ask me that question again? Ask that yeah, question. Sure. Just yeah. in terms of things, you know, when and if you're elected. What what are those topics you really want to dive deep in in terms of charter revision? You know, maybe you'll end up making a change, maybe not. But you know, give us one to three areas that you think you could want to really get into. Well, I mean, just off the top, um, a, a couple of things. So, I, I was I'm concerned with the way it's written right now that you know, if, if you've lived in the city of Portland for three months, you are qualified to run for charter or a city council or a school board. Um, I think that that's really too soon. You know, I mean, I think you should be more invested in our community before you, you know, you can come in and, and, and take on that, that, that role. Uh, and then that goes into, you know, the whole fair, um, the, the election process there, you know, somebody that just came to our city within three months and now we, you know, they have funds available for us to support them in running a campaign. I, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think it's definitely something that I want to talk about. It's three months is very soon. It, it, it's too early. Uh, you're not invested in our community. Um, and then the other thing is, um, what was the other thing I had? Sorry about that. Um, kind of lost my train of thought on that. Uh, The, no problem. Let me do a follow-up. Yeah, can yeah no, no, go ahead. I, I had something and I, I lost it. Sorry. Okay. Well, I think one thing that's going to be clear, I'll do this separate question then, um, but let Moni, you continue on. Um, and then this, I think this will be probably the last one and then we'll, we'll move to closing statements. So um, it seems the way things are headed that, you know, that there will be a, diverse set of, which is great, a diverse set of voices and, and um, ideas on the Charter Commission. So Moni, talk a little bit about how you, you know, you, you've said multiple times, you know, you're coming with an open mind. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about, you know, how you plan to engage with a, a range of opinions and maybe a little bit about, you know, experiences with um, dealing with folks with a range of opinions in past, past life, past work that will prepare you for that? Well, I mean, it, it, it's, I, I feel like I'm very qualified for that. I'm, you know, I'm a track coach uh, at Poland High School. And, you know, I deal with many different athletes and different personalities. And so it, it's just really important to be able to understand and have an open dialogue in, in communicate, especially when we're sitting down to talk about stuff. Um, I, I, I mean, um, Sorry, you know, when you were asking that question, I was going back to the the other the other question that um, you were you were asking me, and I thought of something, and now I, I yeah, go ahead. You still got time? No, go ahead. Can you jump to Ryan and then come back to me? On that? It's okay with Ryan? Is that cool with you? Sure. Yeah, whatever works. Yeah, yeah. So Ryan, maybe talk a little bit about you know how you how you plan to work productively with other members of the Charter Commission if you're elected. Yeah, sure. Um, you bring to the table. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you, um, uh, you know, doing doors alone over the past uh, couple months has has really shown me the very vast array of opinions that people in our community have, and how a lot of folks actually agree on things. Um, 
And as a community, we agree on a lot of things. Um, I've talked to Republicans. I talk. I have Republicans who are voting for me. I have Democrats who are voting for me. Um, you know, working the community and, and hearing those different perspectives has taught me a lot. So that's one thing. But as far as life experience goes, um, you know, I can tell you that that the legal profession, law school. Um, right now, I'm working part time. I do veterans disability claims, um, and uh, I can tell you that working with with people. Um, going through stuff and, and working in that in that field is, is very high stress and it's all you talk to a lot of different people with a lot of different opinions. Um, I've also done work on other campaigns uh, in the district. Um, I did some work up in uh, northern Maine uh, with Jared Golden's campaign. I knocked on doors in northern Maine. I talked to Republicans in, in, in the middle of nowhere, northern Maine. Um, and that's not easy, right? But it's important to realize that like, we shouldn't cut out half the city in this process when we're working on it. This needs to be an open-minded thing. Um, and we need to work with people from, from different perspectives and different backgrounds. And we need to go to doors that we don't always necessarily agree with. Um, and that's, that's how I'm approaching it. Um, I am a younger guy, I'll admit it. I don't have a ton of life experience to speak to, um, but, but that's, how, that's how I'm approaching it. And that's how I'm gonna continue to approach this. Thanks so much, Ryan. And yeah, Moni, want to finish up on, I think what we're doing is going back to kind of one of the areas that you think needs attention and revision in the charter. Um, yeah, so you know, you, you know how I feel strongly about the, the, the candidates that are running that, you know, three months qualification there. Uh, as long as they're lived in our city for three months, they're qualified to run or, or you know, for for government, uh, our city position. I don't agree with that. The other thing going back to Ryan is, is what he's saying is, you know, the difference for, for me is that I don't have an agenda getting on this board. I, I wanna go into this uh, with a, an open mind um, and, and I don't have a political um, motivation after this. You know, I, I'm not trying to pursue other things. This is definitely, you know, out of my comfort zone. Uh, but I'm very excited to take it on. Uh, I'm very motivated behind this because I feel like I'm very invested in our community. Uh, I've lived here almost all my life and I know a lot of people in District 5, uh, not just parents, but also kids. And so I want to be the voice. You know, I, I want to be able to be transparent and let them know what's going on. I don't have a problem uh, going door to door and, and, and asking my neighbors, uh, what they think about what's going on. And so uh, I think my life experience and just being a, a resident and a homeowner and a property uh, payer and, and a father uh, and husband in this community is, is, is something that I can bring to the table. Right, well, so we're gonna finish up with closing statements, um, two minutes each. Moni, you are first. Um, so your opportunity to just talk about anything that you didn't get to um, or that your, your opponent mentioned and, and you didn't get to talk about. So please take it away and, and thanks. Yeah, I, well, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I appreciate it. This is my first time doing this. So it was a little nerve wracking, but I think this has been really fun. Um, you know, I mean, it, when you, you know, on, on June 8th, when you go to vote, I really want you to, to, to take in consideration the, that, you know, I don't have an agenda. I want to be able to go and, and talk with, with all the other members in, in it, with having an open dialogue and, and really trying to figure out what is best for our city. You know, um, this is not, you know, a stepping stone for me in, in the political aspect of it. You know, I don't want us to look at this charter as a political platform. Uh, I'm a concerned citizen. I've lived here almost all my life and I have kids in the system. And, um, and so I just wanna be the voice and I don't have a problem going door to door. I don't have a problem having dialogues with people face to face about the, the tough issues that's going on. And so that's what I would offer. And um, I hope I get your, vo uh, your vote on June 8th. Thanks, Moni. Uh, Ryan, your closing thoughts? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I, this has been great. This has been excellent. I've really enjoyed it. Um, these have been great questions that I'm happy to hear. I've heard them a lot, but I'm happy to verbalize them. Um, I've lived in North Deering also my entire life. Um, I grew up here, lived here, um, you know, went to our local schools and I, I really care about this community. 
And, um, you know, I, I agree. I, I do think people across Portland are, you know, are treating this as, as a political opportunity to cram through an agenda. That's not what it is for me at all. Um, you know, this is a very serious, very consequential process that we should approach very cautiously. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope this will be one of the public, you know, one of the most public facing, if not the most public facing processes Portland has had in a very long time. Um, and I'm excited to get to work on it. I mean, this isn't a political job. This isn't a politician job. This is sitting in a room, pulling out some books in your computer and researching and talking to people. This is, this is a constitutional document. Um, you know, this is something that we need to pursue very, very carefully. And, um, you know, right now in Portland, there are certain interest groups and certain individuals that, that uh, and I'm not saying that about money, I'm saying other folks, you know, who are interested in, in yes, in pursuing this as a political agenda. It's not what I'm planning on doing. Um, this is our chance to look at what's works and what doesn't work. Um, you know, I'm your neighbor. We're all neighbors here, most of us, if you're from the district. And uh, this is our chance to, to really give us a voice. So really, when you go on on June 8th, think about that. Think about this is this is our chance. The charter is only opened a decade if we're lucky, sometimes 20 or 30 years. Um, it's our chance to really evaluate this. And, and Portland's at a crossroads. So let's take a look. Let's take a closer look. And um, I hope you'll I hope you'll join me in that. So never hesitate to reach out. Um, my phone number and, and, and email and stuff is on my website, and Facebook page or whatever. Just you can find it somewhere. Um, and I'm happy to talk. So um, it's been great. And, and I really appreciate you all uh, having me here. So thanks. Great. Well, Ryan Lozanek and Moni Hang, thank you so much. It was a really thank you. You know, civil, substantive um, discussion. Good to introduce you guys. I mean, at the very least, now you guys get to meet virtually and hopefully in person um, soon. Absolutely. Um, uh, you know, this is a big, it is a big deal. It's, a, it, it's the constitution of Portland. It sets the rules of, of governance. And, and so it's, it's really important that we have an informed electorate to, to pick who will, District 5 will, um, will have representing us. So on behalf of Deering Center Neighborhood Association, thank you both for the time and your preparation and, and your honest answers. Um, wish you both luck and uh, please um, follow us on our Facebook site, our website, DeeringCenter.me um, and uh, look forward for seeing you again uh, in the future. Thanks so much, Mike. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brian. All right. And thank uh, you guys. Thank, thank you. you. See ya.